Hey, my name is Matt and welcome to Ranking Tactics. In this video, I want to teach you how to use my newly released AI template called Blog H3 Generator. It makes some amazing output using the AI. And what it's going to do, it's going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is write a transitionary paragraph between your H2 and your first H3. A lot of times you just don't want empty space in there. This is going to write that little introduction transition paragraph for you all automatically. The other thing it's going to do is come up with some different H3 options for you to pick and choose from. And it's really cool. I can't wait to show it to you. Now we're using all of this in a tool called Phrase. If you don't have Phrase, then in the description below, there's a link to get it. There's also a code. Use that code on checkout and you'll save on your first month. Now, if you already have Phrase, but maybe you're struggling to use Phrase. Maybe you just got it. You don't really know where to begin. Maybe you don't really know about SEO and SEO is how you rank. If you don't know SEO, it's going to be really hard to use Phrase. Or maybe you're just trying to fit it into your workflow and you don't really know where phrase fits. Don't worry. In the description below, there's also a link to my course, my phrase beginner to master course. It's going to take you from that beginner stage all the way to that master stage. It's over eight hours of content. I'm going to hold your hand through the whole process and answer your questions. Definitely check it out if you're really serious about leveling up your ranking game. Now let's talk about this template. You can find all of my templates when you go into a document by clicking on AI Write and then clicking community. A lot of people just click on this AI tools, click on the community. You can find the community templates, not just templates that I've made, but templates by other authors too. A lot of cool things to check out. Now, if you want to find just my templates, you type in the letters RT in brackets. I have over 25 templates. They've been used over 100,000 times. A lot of cool stuff in here. You can get a lot more value out of phrase using these templates. Now, the one we're looking for is called Blog H3 Generator. There's two in here that have Blog H2 Generator that I made, but we're not talking about those today. We're talking about the H3 one. So let's click this. And it's very simple to use. It takes two inputs, an article title and an article subtopic. I have two, two samples here we're going to play with right now. We do it live on camera. Hopefully this thing works. This template's a little bit more finicky. Some of my other templates like the listicle from, with paragraphs or my paragraph from scratch templates, they give consistently good output as long as the AI knows about it. This template here is going to take a couple generations. It might take three generations to get something really good, or you're going to have to mix and match stuff. But eventually you can get something good with this, assuming your input is good. And I'll show you what I mean. How to bake bread. That's going to be our H1. Now, it's important to put something in here that's not click friendly, but it's AI friendly. And the way I distinguish that is a click friendly H1 for how to bake bread would be how to bake bread like your mama used to bake it, plus secret tips or something like that. Now, that's not going to be what we put in here for the AI because that's going to confuse the AI. So we just want to put in how to bake bread because that's what we're really trying to do. We're dumbing it down for the AI. Now, the H2 is choose the right flower. Now, let me take a step back and tell you, for my articles, I don't always have H3. You don't want to just have an H3 for every H2 you have. The time to make H3s are when you have a lot to say in your H2 and you want to break it up into readable chunks. Now, sometimes when you have too much to say, you want to then create a separate article. Maybe I want to make a whole separate article about choosing the right flour for your bread. Now, I can do that, you know, or I can break it up inside of here and talk about just some different H3s about choosing the right flower. Or I can just have a couple paragraphs about choosing the right flower and not have something really long. A lot of different options for you, but we're assuming that we want some H3s in here. So choosing the right flower. And the reason why you might want some H3s are maybe there's some different considerations. Maybe there's times you want to use wheat flour versus white flour. Or maybe there's times when you want to use almond flour versus something else. Like if you're on keto, this will help come up with those different ideas. So we have that in there. We want to leave the creativity now at, at level three. That's the default. You don't want to go down to two. You don't want to go down to one for this template. Sometimes you might want to bump it up to five, but don't do that at first. Just leave it at three. Now click run template. Now, again, for this template, I'm going to do three generations and see what I get. It doesn't take long to run this. So running three won't take very long. Awesome. Wow. We have a lot of good choices. I don't really know which one to pick. So Here's the format that you'll see. You're going to see a little, you'll see a little title here. We don't need the title and you can just click on one of these and it will paste it in. So we have a little introduction and we can take the introduction that we like the most. So this is our introduction slash transition paragraph between our H2 and our H3. So bread making is fun for everyone involved. There are people who love baking bread and there are those who hate it. Regardless of how much you enjoy cooking, choosing the right type of flour will make or break your experience. That sounds pretty good. There are three types of flour, all purpose, bread and cake, all purpose. This kind of talks about each one. 
I guess we can select one of these H3s if we want to talk more about it. When making bread, there are certain types of flour that work better than others. In general, white flour. So this is actually, wow, I don't know what to pick. I'll paste it in here so you can see it. If I take that paragraph there. So if I take that, that's a really good transition paragraph. But if I take this, this could actually be a featured snippet. When making bread, there are certain types of flour that work better than others. In general, white flour works fine, although whole wheat flour has more protein. So this could be a featured snippet that Google might even pick. So I don't know which one I would pick. They're both very good. Or you know what? I could even pick both of them. So now we need some H3. So a lot of different options up here. What kind of flour should I choose? Wheat flour, all-purpose, white, etc. All-purpose flour most commonly used. Whole grain flour provides complex carbohydrates. White flour, lightest flavor, lowest fat content. This is freaking great. Now, these are all my H3s I could talk about if I wanted to go that in depth. I could have a 2,000 word sub article for this H2 if I wanted to. I also might want to just break this up into a separate article. The world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want with this. All right, those are H3s. This worked perfect. Great. Now let's try this other hypothetical. Steps to buying a house. A lot of different steps to buying a house. You might want to talk about negotiating the price a little bit more in depth. So that's why you might need some H3s. Let's do three generations. Okay, great. We got three. So looking at these, this is talking about the overall process, thinking about renting now, start looking at homes. So again, you do a couple generations. So I don't like this third output. This first one, realistic budget, prepare to negotiate, get help from a realtor or agent, negotiate before the contract is signed. That's not bad. I like this intro better. So I'm gonna take this intro. Buying a home is one of the biggest financial decisions people make. Many people spend months or years looking at houses, making offers, negotiating prices, et cetera, et cetera. Negotiating the price of a home is a complicated process. This chapter will teach chapter, wow. <laughs> that You could even say this. Chapter two, this chapter will teach you how to negotiate the price of a home. Fantastic. Consider all upfront costs. I think about taxes and interest rates. Look for homes with room for improvement. Make sure you're not getting taken advantage of. Be prepared to negotiate. So I'm taking, so I, I took what I wanted from this generation. Now I'm going to take a couple from this. Negotiate before the contract is signed. Negotiate during closing. Negotiate set. So different times you can negotiate. So these are all potential H3s now. So look how easy that is to build out some different H3s. Now, this is very important. I'm going to tell you a little secret right here. How do you then write about this? What I would do is I would go out to my, if you wanted to use AI, now if you just wanted to hire a writer or do this yourself, okay, no problem at all. But if you want to use AI, this is what I would do. Paragraphs from keywords. So I would use this. And what I would do is, I'm trying to think which one I want to pick. All right, steps to buying a house. Actually, negotiate the price. That's our high level. We'll see if this works. I hope this works. Consider upfront costs. So we don't have the word house in here yet. We have negotiate the price. That's our H2. And then we have our H3, which is consider all upfront costs. So where do we get this H1? How do we tell this AI that we're talking about a house? Two ways to do it. We could say negotiate the price of the house when buying, we could say that. And if you did that, you could actually use my paragraphs from scratch template, or we could say buying a house. We're seeding it with some keywords, buying a house, house, shopping, house. <laughs> Hopefully the AI knows we're talking about houses now. We'll see. Okay. Awesome. So it did it. It found the context. When buying a house, there's many costs involved. There's the cost of the property itself, the price, the cost of moving furniture, appliances, the cost of remodeling. But most importantly, when buying a house, you need to consider the total cost of ownership, et cetera, et cetera. And it says down here, if you're looking to sell a house, be prepared to list your home at a lower price than its true value. Negotiating the price down will take some work, but it's worth it to avoid losing out on fees. So it talks about buying and also selling your house. So that's one way I would do this to then write about these different topics using artificial intelligence. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or go to the official phrase Facebook group. It's free to join. Great community there. Definitely take advantage of it. If you have any questions, tag me. I'll be sure to help you out. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later.